Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. One of the conditions for fasting, of course, is that a person uh, has their, their aql, their intellect, is that a person possesses intellect. They're a person of, who can distinguish and they have a sound intellect or at least enough intellectual capacity to have an intention and know what they're doing as an act of worship. And the evidence for the aql or intellect being a condition for fasting is the hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal rufiya qalaman thalatha an al-na'imi an al-na'imi hatta yastaykad wa an al-sabi hatta yakbar wa an al-majnuni hatta yaqul ruahu Abu Dawood wa Nisa'i wa ibn Hiban in this hadith of the Prophet wasallam, it gives us evidence that from the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, regarding the uh, that the aql is a condition for fasting and, and in fact for, for all of our acts of ibadah that we must possess intellect. So in this hadith the Prophet wasallam said that the pin is lifted on three the person sleeping until they awaken the uh, child which has not reached puberty until they become uh, of age and the person who has uh, who, who is uh, insane or has lost their their intellectual capacity until they regain it and that was, and we already related where that was in you'll find that in Sunan Abi Dawood with Sunan Nisai uh, or Nisai and um, in his book uh, Sunan al-Kubra and Ibn Hiban and so that lets us know from the Sunnah of the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that one of the conditions for fasting is that we possess intellectual capacity and the Dalil from the Ijma of the, uh, the Ulama meaning the consensus of the Ulama as was uh, reported from Ibn Ibn Hazm, rahimahullah taala, he said that that it was ijma. That means it's a consensus of the the scholars. But then we have to look at the various different states or the various types of losing one's intellect, or if a person has uh, an intellectual capacity that is reduced and not fully gone and the difference between someone uh, being in a, uh, a state where they're unconscious and so forth. So one of the things, if a person is, does not have the intellectual capacity and this is during all, this is something continuous during uh, every, every time Ramadan comes and in and, and general that their state status is that they are uh, intellectually challenged to the extent where they are unable to to process their the fact that they're fasting and so forth for in this situation the person who is in this state that fasting is not required of them Aslan it's not an obligation nor is there in, uh, nor do they have to make it up. There's no qada. And this is the madhab of the jamhur of Ahl al meaning this is the majority of the scholars of Ahl al meaning the Hanafiya, the Shafi'iya, and the Hanabila. And Ibn Hazm also held this view, with Ibn Abdul Barr as well. And that's because the person who is uh, insane or has totally lost their intellectual capacity then they are not from the people who fasting is re required from them. And that goes back to the hadith we, we already mentioned. Because then one of the conditions for fasting has not been met, meaning that they have 
uh, intellectual capacity. They have an akal, or their akal is is sound. But what about the ruling about the person who just loses their intellectual capacity during the day of Ramadan? So if a person loses their their capacity, uh, their their intellect int intellectual capacity during the day of Ram Ramadan. then they are not responsible for that day but the other days they would uh, they would fast meaning if someone today lost their intellectual capacity for whatever reason and may Allah protect us from that then this is a temporary state, and, and they, this was a temporary state. They lost it for today. Then they do not have to make up this day because at the time of losing their capacity, when, when they lost their capacity, they, it was no longer an obligation upon them. And then once, once their intellect has been restored, then they would make. Uh, then they would. Um, can they would continue to fast? Because then they would become from the people from Ahlul Wujub, meaning those people who it's an obligation for them to fast, meaning that they fit the criterion of having to fast. Another issue here is according to the Jamhur of the Ulama as well, the majority, is that a person, <coughs> alhamdulillah, is that when a person loses their, their intellect, of course they're not responsible, so they don't have to make for that because at that time it was not an obligation upon them and when their intellect is restored of course then they will be responsible for fasting so then they should uh, fast then another issue arises what about the individual who was fasting they had their intellect then they lost their intellect they became uh, they, they lost their intellectual capacity so the Hanafiya and the Hanabila say and the and also Ibn Hazm also hold the view that this person does not have to make up their fasting. They were fasting, then they lost their intellectual capacity. They don't have to make it. Make it up. Because they were no longer responsible and the according to the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Rufia Rufia al Aklam an Thalatha or Rufia al Qalam an Thalatha and one of the people he mentioned that the pin has been lifted on is the person who is who is uh, who has lost their intellect. And then the person who another issue arises, what about the person who who fasts and sometimes they, they, they're in and out of consciousness or in and out of having an intellectual capacity. So basically, that when they are able to, then they fast. When they're unable to, they do not fast and they are not required to because they have not met that condition of having an intellectual capacity, as we mentioned. Those are some of the important issues related related to this issue of alhamdulillah <coughs> of uh, of fasting and the intellect. One one last masala that arises is what about the individual who becomes unconscious?
So the person who is fasting, they have the intention for fasting, then they became unconscious. The first situation related to this, there's two different ways in which this can happen. The first way is the person who's unconscious the whole day. That means that they became unconscious before Fajr. And that they don't regain consciousness until after Maghrib. Then this person, it, it was not uh, correct for them and, and accepted from them to fast, obviously. And however, they must make up that day. And this is the st statement of the majority of the scholars from the Malikiyah, the Shafi'iyah, with the Hanabila, <coughs> Alhamdulillah. And this is also uh, Ibn Qudama, he said, he uh, n said it was Ijma, that this was a situation where it was a uh, consensus of the scholars about this, about not having to, that the person their fast is not accepted, but that they have to make it up. So this is for an unconsciousness. <clears throat> and the second situation, and also the evidence for this, the evidence for this call, first let's go to the delil. قال الله تعالى ومن كان مريدا أو على سفر فعدة فعدة من أيام أخر. So Allah subhanahu wa taala says, whoever is is sick and whoever is traveling, then the time period in which they need to make, then they will fast uh, another time, a time when when they're not sick or when they're not traveling. So this lets us know. So this is the how those who hold the view that we just mentioned, which is the majority, uh, this is the evidence that they use that the person who loses, uh, who becomes unconscious from Fajr to, uh, to Maghrib during the holy month of Ramadan, that they have to make up that day for the time they were unconscious. They make up that day. The other view, or the other situation, is a person who becomes unconscious, but then they uh, regain their consciousness during a portion of the day. So, if this person, for example, they fasted part of the day and then they became unconscious, they do not have to make it up. There's no qada, and they're fasting is considered uh, sahih for that day. They fasted a portion of the day, and then the rest of the day, they became unconscious. And this is uh, according to the madhab of Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah ta'ala, with Imam with uh, Hanabila, rahimahumullah, and that is that fasting with the intention that even though if it was a part of the day, uh, under this circumstance, then he's got their intention and that was sufficient for their fasting and their fasting was sahih because they lost consciousness for the rest of the day. So that is the goal of uh, of the Shafi'iyah and the Hanabila. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ilm nafi, ruskin tayyibu, amalim mutaqabbinan and protect us from losing our intellectual capacity and may Allah forgive us of our sins wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam